sun's name. Okay, Scott, so we got Red Run going in the Jeff Ruby Saturday. Um, coming off a big win in Texas on the turf, does it seem like that he has found a home on the turf? Well, I mean, his it was definitely one of his better races. Um, you know, his his race on the dirt last year, last fall at Churchill was good. But, um, you know, I think the distance has helped him. And, um, you know, he seemed to have a little better turn of foot, foot on the grass than he did the dirt. And, of course, Saturday you're hoping he finds a home on Tapita. Yeah, I mean, you just never know. Um, you, you know, I, I think the horse runs really f well fresh off the layoff. I think he proved that in Texas. And um, we kind of pointed to this race after he'd won, won the grass stake there. Um, and you were with him a lot of the winter at the fairgrounds. Um, just sort of talk about his development. You know, he's he's uh, definitely started to mature physically like we expect some of the gun runners to do. Um, you know, he's a beautiful mover, very smart horse, and, um, you know, we expect to have a good year with him. And the gun runners have been he's off to such an amazing start at stud that he's not even really, he's not in the first tier, because in the first tier you have an unbeaten Breeders' Cup champion in there. But just what does it say about Gunrunner? And you were around Gunrunner his whole career. Um, the the stakes winners he's been producing on, on both surfaces, dirt and turf. Well, it's it's somewhat unheard of. And, you know, it's been very historical, you know, from a stallion standpoint. Um, you know, with his pedigree and the things that he accomplished on the racetrack, I think it's, a, you know, good comparison to Curlin and ho horses like that that were just such standouts, you know, physically and from a talent standpoint. And I think it's transferred over, you know, into the stud, into their stud careers. Yeah, but that is amazing. Curlin made 10, 000, uh, 10 million, um, Gunrunner just under 16 million. They've um, just gone on, like you said, and had these, you know, been unbelievable sires. Yeah, and you know, he, you know, Gunrunner's been, you know, he's, they've been very precocious early. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, get, continuing to get more of them because I, they're just, uh, they just have so much talent in class. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't think they would necessarily be that precocious as they as they've been with how well, many won first time out and you know Steve, early in the year. Steve had always liked Gunrunner early on in in his career, and I, I think he purposely, you know, kind of kept him back from Saratoga. He broke his maiden going on mile at Churchill and then ran in, you know, took a more conservative route, ran him in an allowance race at Keeneland. So, um, you know, I, I just think with moving forward, I, you know, he's one of those horses. It's just, a, he's an elite talent and an elite stallion. Now red run is speaking of elite. I mean, he's by gun runner, but he's also from that great family at the Winchells that I believe untappable is, yeah. um, from, your champion in Kentucky Oaks and Breeders' Cup uh, winner. Does Red Run remind you? Does he have any of the characteristics of of his uh, relatives? That well, you've been around? he's actually he he kind of acts like his dad. He's a little cheeky, you know, as a two year old, and uh, you know he he likes to get his nips in, and uh, he's he, he's just not as big, and um, you know, hopefully, he continues to improve.